had it right up until the end. Yeah, that's pretty close. Throw the extended mag on there. Yeah. Grip width. There you go. That's pretty close. That's pretty close, yeah. yeah. I think it's definitely got a beat as far as without the extended mag on. Mm -hmm. But um, as a secondary, I like that. I mean, as a backup mag if you're carrying that, definitely. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I've got Edge Weapon 88 uh, here with me on the left side of the table. Uh, we're just out here enjoying a uh, day at the range. And I uh, thought that we would maybe sit down and talk just for a minute uh, about the uh, CAR CW9 as compared to the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm. Um, Keelan has had the uh, CW9 for quite a while. Um, I've shot it several times. Um, I'm a new owner, obviously, uh, to the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. It's only the second time I've shot it, but um, we've been kind of going back and forth, um, shooting both guns, you know, taking turns, um, just to see if we can, uh, you know, notice any differences, if at all, um, you know, however negligible between the two, and we thought we would uh, regale you with those. Uh, so for any prospective buyers, uh, no matter which side of the fence that you're on, if you're thinking about one or the other, um, we'll give you uh, two perspectives on it, and you can just uh, take from it what it's worth. Okay, um, I'll start, I guess. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, the M&P Shield, as compared to the car, um, on paper, apparently, I, I don't know how they're measuring it, whether car is measuring it unloaded and Smith & Wesson's measuring it loaded, but on paper, this is 15 ounces and this is 18. Um, we haven't put it on a scale, so we don't know the exact mathematics on this, guys, but in his hands and in my hands, you know, we're trying to feel any weight difference, if at all. Granted, this does have a laser grip on it, but that's maybe an ounce difference, so that's not even worth debating. Um, I really can't tell any difference at all, you know, no matter what's in my hand, uh, left or right, they feel virtually identical. And if we were going by what's on paper and it was three ounce difference, that would basically be like a, a um, Benchmade Mini Griptilian worth of weight difference, which is a generally light knife, but I think I could tell the difference uh, between those two in my hands. And to the honest truth, we yes, seem to agree that there virtually is no weight difference, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, as far as price point, it's pretty close. Uh, this is about 400 bucks um, shipped from most gun stores. This is right about on the same thing. Um, I had to pay shipping on this, so I had to pay about 30 bucks more, but call it basically 400 bucks retail, so that's not really worth um, going back and forth on. Um, one difference as far as features, uh, the car came with one magazine. The Smith & Wesson came with two. You got a seven and an eight. Uh, this is a seven? Seven. Seven, okay. So that's, you know, if that's a deal breaker for you, Obviously, you know, which side of the fence you're on with that one. Um, and shooting it, uh, I'm really trying to come up with the difference between the two um, as far as recoil management, but the truth is I can't really tell. Um, it, it seems very close uh, between the two of them as far as muzzle rise and felt recoil. They're both very, very good at recoil management, so um, I really don't, don't prefer one over the other compared to one. I, I would call them virtually identical. Um, as far as the trigger, um, we have agreed there are two, not very different triggers, but definitely different. Um, if you're used to a Glock style trigger, this is probably going to be the one you prefer because um, it has the, uh, a little bit of take up in here for the trigger safety. Uh, if you like a straight metal style of trigger, uh, this one is probably going to be the one that you prefer. So it's really, it's not that one is better than the other, it's really just a case of potato potato. You know, I mean, this is really in the eye of the beholder. If you like this kind of thing, you know, if you started shooting on like I did with the Ruger SR9 and SR9 Compact, and this is what you define as a good trigger, this is going to be the one uh, that you're going to prefer. But again, if you prefer a metal style trigger, um, that's going to be the one that you prefer. But I'll go ahead and flip it over to Keelan, and uh, he'll give you his input. All right, so in regards to weight, again, it's very negligible if there's any real difference. Although, just from feeling the two firearms, it feels like the Smith & Wesson has just a tiny bit more weight to it, but again, very, very minimal. Um, and if any of that weight's coming from anything, it's probably the slide. Um, but that's, that's really the only two things I could differentiate between the weight. Now, the mags, this is car's kind of budget line firearm. Any car is going to be, you know, more expensive on average than most other firearms of the same kind of category. Um, they're just a little bit more pricier firearm to begin with. Um, and so that's why I give you one mag so you can choose if you want to get another one later to add it. And again, the mags are a little bit pricey, so an extra mag would, you know, bring it up, you know, 30, 40 bucks, um, and just in comparison to the Smith and Wesson. Uh, and then the trigger, yes, they're very different. Again, this is very Glock, very, you know, 
striker fire gun trigger that you're, that you're pretty much used to, as opposed to cars, which is a very similar to a double action revolver. Uh, it's extremely smooth, it breaks consistent, consistently, so you can, if you practice with it, you can get very good with it, and I'm extremely comfortable with it. However, um, I also own a uh, Smith & Wesson MMP Shield uh, 9mm uh, compact, and I'm used to the shield trigger as well. It's just two different worlds, and as long as you're used to it and you practice with it, they're both great triggers, but you will have fans uh, of both worlds. So I think uh, those are really the only differences I can think of, although a uh, car does suggest you lock the slide back and use the, the slide release or slide lock to chamber around. Uh, it can be a little bit finicky uh, if you just try to slingshot it as opposed to the Smith & Wesson here, which you know both Jimbo and I have used the slingshot method and it works perfectly fine. So the car can be a little bit finicky at times. Cool, man. Um, as far as uh, accuracy, um, we shot both these guns several times today. I'm going to go on a limb here and say I'm pretty close to even with both guns. Um, obviously, the gun's more accurate than I am um, and probably more accurate than most shooters. But as far as my accuracy, if you really want to go tit for tat, we're shooting steel targets. It was almost identical uh, between the two of them. That's, you know, doing both of them back to back. So, um, you know, obviously the guns are going to be better shots than you are, but... Um, as far as which one is more accurate, I really can't tell the difference. Um, the sights on them are very comparable um, as far as visibility and uh, quickness of acquiring, at least in my opinion. So um, what we really have here, guys, is these two obviously are direct competitors. You know, the car came out first, and M&P, uh, Smith & Wesson, rather, uh, obviously was targeting guns like this when they introduced the shield. They were trying to break into that market, and um, they've really brought something very close to what the car is in virtually every category. You know, they've, it's definitely an M&P in all respects. Um, you know, it's built just like an M&P. It is a single stack. So if you love M&Ps and you were on the fence about the car, if you really and truly love this style of gun, go with this gun because this is very true to the M&P line of gun. But at the same time, the car is still a great value. Again, like Keelan said, this is in their budget line, but don't let that fool you. This is definitely a very refined firearm. Um, it's very easy to fire. Um, even, you know, for someone uh, like me, you know, just picking it up, you know, and never having a shot it, it's very easy to just pick it up and go with it. So um, I hope this has been helpful for you guys, you know, just tossing the ball back and forth here. Uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them below, and uh, Keelan and I will be happy to jump in. Uh, but I guess right now, stay tuned for some more range footage. I don't really mind. Take your time. Take your precious time. You're so blind. You're so really blind. But never you mind. Oh, we got four. Cause I just came to I got this thing. Go big for it. 